I greet you once again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm here so that we can continue with our study for this month. My name is Nawiri Margaret, and I pray that we meditate upon these words. Before we begin, let's humble ourselves for our prayer. Kind and loving God in heaven, we thank you for the gift of life you've given unto us, Father. Father, I thank you for you've provided each and everything so that we are still here living. Father, I pray that you forgive us all our sins and may you teach us to forgive as you forgive us. I'll pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Today our our title is Temptations and our leading scripture is going to come from the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 and it says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and and taste. When you talk about temptations, we know that everyone on earth is tempted. If I told Jesus himself, when he was on earth, he was tempted. Which means when you are around here on earth, you have to expect temptations. It is a must. But the Bible is telling us that if you, if you try and draw yourself far away from God because of what you've seen around you, what has taken your eyes, what you think is good for you, you will be having more temptations. And for you to overcome them, it is going to be hard for you because you've drawn yourself far away from God. In Eastern Africa, a troop of about 50 baboons made themselves at home, right next to a farm. The baboons were amusing at first, but soon were out their welcome. Before, before then, they were ravaging the corn and the other crops and helping themselves to anything they could get their hands on. We see that these baboons, when they found this beautiful place, at first they were good, but after some time they started misbehaving. They started destroying people's crops, people's corns, everything, as you know how stubborn these creatures can be. And it says, the, the frustrated farmers in the areas made plans to have the animals destroyed. Now you see, they first destroyed their crops and now the farmers also are planning for them to destroy them. To do this, they, they set up cages with food in them. Their plan was to capture the baboons and kill them once they were trapped. Baboons, however, aren't stupid animals. Sensing that the cages were dangerous, they refused to go in. One thing I want us to learn is that baboons, they can look and think. And so when the, when the farmers decided to make a trap for them, they rose and said, mm, no. But the farmers were patient after several days. These baboons are like, I want us to get this story. The baboons are like us. Of course, we realize that mm, there is a trap. Satan is trapping me, but let me ignore, I can't. And Satan will, will be, let me like the farmers, what they said. But the farmers were patient. After several days, one of the hungry baboons ventured into the cage and sampled the food. Satan is patient. You will say, no, this is a trap, but for, for him, he says, let me wait for you. I'll get you in my trap. It was very good. We see that one baboon went, went and tasted on the food, and it was very good. And nothing bad happened to it. The next day, the same baboon returned for more, for more food. Other baboons soon followed. After a few days, the entire troop of baboons were going into the cages to feast on the food that had been put in the cage. Rather than being afraid of the cages, the baboons started to like them. We will see one person has done something. Okay, that's, the dog has tempted this person and nothing has happened to this person. And for you say, how come? Remember that the dog has been patient with you waiting, silently. He knows he'll get you in his trap. And when he sends one person, you will look at this person, nothing has happened to this person. And you will say, let me also try. You see how Satan gets us. Now you see that even we start making sin, we have, we have been tempted and now we fall in love with what we are doing, which is wrong. Continues. For several weeks, the baboons went into the cages every day to get their food. You will see that every day you will start engaging in this sin. At first, it was a temptation and you had to choose which side. But when you, when you choose the wrong side, of course, it will become an, 
a habit and you get used to it and it will become normal one day however the food was tied to the door flash when the animals grabbed the food the door of the cage slammed sl- shut remember these farmers were waiting patiently for them and it took a lot of time but they were waiting and one day when they got that chance the, the trap was set very well and the baboons were trapped in that cage the baboons were poked at first but quickly went back to finishing their meal of course when things try to backfire for us we can be shocked a bit but after some time we see it normal and we go back again let's see they showed no real concern for the fact they had been trapped in a cage of course they were used now they don't even care they don't even know you know that when you engage yourself in sin you forget that it is even sin you take it normal down deep you know it can harm you but just like the food those traps in those traps it looks pretty good and you are hungry that's the sin nature deep down our in our hearts we know what is right and what is wrong because we have someone to guide us whichever thing we do we have someone to guide us and this person is the holy spirit and in moment of deciding which path are you going to take when you're tempted are you going to take the right path or the wrong path this person is always there to guide you which path should you take you may try to resist temptations and do the right thing at first but then you start to see other people indulging themselves without anything bad happening when you see so and so has, has done something and nothing has happened to them do you copy them and say after all nothing happened to, to so and so which means me also just like the baboons you start to believe that you can get away with, with it yourself in the same way god sent his son jesus to risk so jesus came and paid the price for our salvation where we were sinners jesus christ died for our sins the baboons fortunately they weren't killed as as the farmer's plan was remember we said the farmer is the is the devil the devil's plan is to kill you in sin which has led you in but of course god this plan is to save us and this fortunately when we get to our story fortunately the baboons were not killed a savior came and paid the farmers paid for the places they put in for the cages and what and then paid them for the destroyed crops and took these baboons to some other place which was not having people and so amidst all temptations we have someone who saved us before and i'm sure that this person can save us again when you're sur- surrounded by temptations do you look up for salvation for choices when you're going to make that choice do you look up to him first we shall read in the book of first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 which says there has no temptation taken you but such as a common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it god is telling us that he can never allow you to be tested much more than you can bear of course he knows your strength he knows what you can do and what you can't you just have to first think about him before you decide on any temptation that comes across you we shall also read from the book of book chapter 22 verse 39 and it's saying and he came out and went as he was born to the mount of olive and his tables also followed him and when he was at the place he said unto them pray that ye enter not into temptation of course jesus was also tempted he was a good example to us we shall not say that for him when he came on earth he wasn't tempted no he was also tempted and here because he knows the the power of a, a, a temptation he was trying to encourage these disciples that you pray that you don't enter into it it let's read from verse 41 and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and he knelt down and prayed of course every time he got a temptation or he knelt down on his knees and prayed to god the most high i want to encourage each and everyone that when you get any temptation just kneel down try to think about heaven before any other thing before deciding and, what to and there is another reminder for us which is in first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says for the love of man is the root of all evil which will which will some converted after they have erred from the faith 
and pierced themselves full with many sorrows, money. Every day we are looking for money, but money is going to come with a lot of temptations. When you have money, you see like you can do something and cover it with your money. A lot of temptations are going to come to you because of your money. The devil will make you great because because you have money. So, as we are in this journey of looking for money, because I know most of us, we are always, our, our minds are always on money. How will I get money? When will I become rich? How, how many ways have you thought about to remain on our truth when you get money? Just remember God amid all temptations that will come unto you. And I want to pray that we always look up to God because he knows what we can handle and what we can't. And I pray that we continue listening because the program is still on. And I pray that may God bless each and everyone for your time and effort. Let someone also for out of prayer. And a loving God in heaven, we thank you for the gift of life you've given unto us, Father. We thank you for you've spoken unto us today, Father. Father, I pray that you gave us, be with us. Father, may these words always stick into our minds so that we can follow you, so that in that time of deciding where to go, which path to take, we always think about you before do, doing any other thing, so that you can lead us through all the temptations. I pray this living and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.